Good afternoon, interwebs. Welcome to soggy southeastern Michigan. It is very cold, very rainy today. That's why I'm coming at you live right now from this parking garage. Whoops. Turn my phone down here so I'm not hearing myself. Um, so yeah, this is a 2017 Toyota Prius Prime, and thank you for joining us for this live walk around of the car. Of course, if you've got any questions or comments, post them up in the Facebook chat below, and I will try to respond to them as best I can. If you are, however, watching this on YouTube, we're gonna upload it there a little bit later, do not post questions because I don't have a time machine. I won't be able to go ahead into the future to see what you're asking me, so please refrain. But anyway, this is the 2017 Toyota Prius Prime. This is the replacement for the old Prius plug-in, if you remember from a few model years ago. And they changed the name just to try to, I think, inject a little excitement into the product because Prime is supposed to be in like the peak, the best, the top model. And for now, this is, you know, basically the most efficient Prius that you can get. Um, it is very economical. The advantage of, of this car over the standard Prius is that you have a much larger battery pack. It measures about 8.8 .8 kilowatt hours. It's a lithium ion chemistry in there. And that gives you a claimed electric only driving range of about 25 miles, though of course that does vary based on the conditions. If you're going super fast out on the highway, for instance, you're not gonna get that full range. Also, if it's very cold out, don't count on it going full 25 miles. So, what is there to say about this wonderful car? We did have a few advanced questions come in via social media. Um, one person asks me, what do I think of the design? Ah, <sighs> the design. Yes, um, I think the Prime is more attractive, marginally more attractive than the standard Prius, but my goodness, there is a whole lot going on with this car. Um, I, I, I find it hard to believe. I, I personally do not find it attractive at all. Um, if there is one interesting design element to this vehicle, it's the back window here because the glass is actually not flat like in most cars. It's caved in in the middle a little bit there. And you can see they sort of carried that through onto the little deck lid here. And that actually not just looks cool, but it improves aerodynamics in addition to that. But styling, yeah, it's, I'm not a fan. And I find it hard to believe that, you know, Thousands of very smart people, way more knowledgeable about a bunch of stuff than I am, spent probably, I'm guessing, three years bringing this car to market to design it, to engineer it, to plan it, to figure out how to build it. Um, and I can't believe that nobody along that entire process said, hold on, time out, guys. Uh, maybe we should make it look a little more conventional. But, you know, you can decide for yourself whether you like it or not. I'm not a big fan, but there are some things about this car that are absolutely praiseworthy, and we'll get to that in just a moment. David Finn agrees with me, not my cup of tea. Um, but another person is asking about the cost. Now, that's a very good question. This one, the Prime starts at about 28,000 bucks, a couple bucks less than 28 grand, which is not too bad especially considering that a regular Prius starts at 24 and change. So it's a few grand more, but you're getting a much greater electric-only driving range with this car. And as, as equipped, this one here was 28,630, if I recall. The only option that it has, the only upcharge item on it, is this red paint, which, if I remember correctly, was about $395. And it's a very sharp red. It's got a bit of a metal flake to it if you get up close. But very nice color. So again, what about efficiency? That's another question we had. Obviously, you're buying a hybrid. You're buying a Prius. Fuel economy matters. Um, and with a standard Prius, it's already incredibly economical. They sticker at 54 miles per gallon city, 50 highway, 52 combined. But this car blows the, mo blows the regular Prius out of the water because you're getting 54 MPG combined in normal driving with the gasoline engine, and 133, 133 MPGE, that's miles per gallon equivalent. And what that means is they're, they've got to try to, you know, equate stored electrons in the battery into the amount of energy contained in a gallon of gasoline. So miles per gallon equivalent is how they do that. And 133 is what you get with this car. Now, 
That is far more than what you get in its main rival. I think the Chevrolet Volt is probably the best foil for the Prius Prime here. And that, of course, is only rated at, let me look at my cheat sheet here, 106 MPG. This is 133, so that's pretty fantastic. Also, the Volt is in conventional internal combustion mode, rated only at 42 MPG. So again, Prius Prime beats it in efficiency. However, there's one big advantage that the Volt has, and that's electric-only driving range. It can do better than 50 miles on a single charge. This one, again, just about 25. And that's because the Volt has a much larger battery pack. It's 18.4 kilowatt hours versus just 8.8 .8 here with the Prius. So take that. And I should say, with the Prius, the battery is mounted in the back here if you want to swing around. Um, I'll open the hatch for you. So you can see sort of the, the cargo floor here is a little bit elevated compared to what you would see in a standard Prius, for instance. Also, if you lift this up, I don't have it in here right now, but this is where your charger goes for plugging it into the wall outlet at home for standard 120 volt juice. Now, if you want to charge this from that 120 volt household outlet, plan on taking about five and a half hours. If you've got access to a 240 volt plug, that drops to about two hours and change. So not really, not too bad there. Um, EV only range, I've mentioned that, 25 miles. Ah, da, 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 what else are we talking about? Oh, cargo area is around 19 cubic feet, which is pretty generous. You can still fold the seat backs down to get even more room, but I've got to say while you're here, this is their idea of a cargo cover. It's like <laughs> a piece of fabric with wire wrapped around it, very flimsy. <laughs> you can see it sort of covers your, your items in the back if you want, but I think this could have been a little bit nicer maybe. Anyway. Other competitors of the Prius Prime, I mentioned the Volt as being sort of its arch nemesis. Hyundai has a, a model coming out as well, the Ionic. It's going to be offered as a hybrid uh, and a plug-in model as well. Um, that's going to offer an electric-only driving range of, they're saying more than 27 miles, which is a bit more than the Prius here. Um, so take that for what it's worth. That car will not go on sale until the fall, so I can't share any pricing information or much more beyond that, but it will have a six-speed dual-clutch automatic transmission and a 1.6-liter gasoline engine. We've got a 1.8-liter in this car, which provides 95 horses. The Ionic will have 104, so a little bit more, but big deal. <laughs> also, the Ford C-Max Energy is another sort of rival to the, uh, to the Prius here, but it's really it's sort of an older product at this point, and it's not very competitive. It only has, I mean, it makes 141 horsepower, but it's nowhere near as efficient. So the reason you buy this car is for the fuel economy, of course, which I have mentioned. 50, pardon me, 54 MPG combined, 133 MPG E, which is how it, when it's running in electric mode, is what you get for that. Um, a range on a full tank. Now that is very impressive. That's another question we got. Um, 640 miles with a full tank of gas and a full battery. That's a lot longer than my bladder will last, I'll tell you that. Gonna need to make stops more frequently than that. Um, does it feel like a regular car? Well, mostly it feels like a regular car. It doesn't drive particularly well. But it does have a lot of torque when you're running on battery power especially, so it can scoot from a standstill quite nicely. But, I mean, mostly as a driver, you're insulated from the hybrid system. It just kind of goes about its business and does what it can to deliver the best fuel economy. And it, for the most part, works well. I'm going to pop the hood so you can see the engine now, sort of the heart of this system. I can't show you the battery. That's buried underneath the seats back there. Ben, are we still live? Because I say broadcast interrupted here. Uh, 61 viewers. 61 viewers, how about that? Maybe I dropped signal or something. I'm going to try to relaunch the app. But anyway, this is the engine, as I mentioned, a 1.8 liter gasoline four-cylinder that puts out, all on its own, a rather measly 95 horsepower. 
but it's good enough for what this car is. When you've got it teamed with the electric motor and all the torque that provides at zero RPM, you don't have much trouble moving. It'll do zero to 60. I'd estimate around 10 seconds, which is hardly fast, but is perfectly adequate, you know? And I can't find the live feed now, Ben. This is making me sad, because I can't monitor questions then. I'm not seeing any come in. Hmm, we don't have any questions. There it is. OK, it's back again. How much does the Prius weigh, Chris Kacharian? I think I'm saying that wrong, <laughs> asks. But thank you for the question. I have that on my cheat sheet. Prius should tip the scales at about 3,365 pounds. That's roughly, I think it's about 300 pounds, 290 pounds more than a regular Prius. And of course, that's all back in the battery pack mostly, which allows you to have about um, you know, 25 miles of electric only range. But uh, why don't we check out the inside now? I should probably close this up first, which is challenging to do one handed, but I have a shoulder to lift the hood. Get in there, little guy. There we go. And down we go. All right, the Prius interior is just as weird as its exterior because you can see they've got this split dashboard with gauges up here, this weird floating center console. It's, it's just odd for the sake of being odd, I think. It's not any more functional than a regular car, and it just looks like some alien spaceship. Then we've got, in this model, the white dashboard and door trim with charcoal elements, piano black, gray seats, <laughs> and then this glossy white plastic that to be polite, resembles a bathroom fixture. I'll let you fill in the blanks there. But it's all just very weird. Um, the front seats are very comfortable, though they're cut very broad, so American-sized, I guess you could say. Uh, no bolstering, not that you're going to be hustling this car through corners. It rolls on skinny eco tires, and it's quite softly sprung, so it's not obviously very sporty. But it's pretty comfortable here. Up front, I've got tons of headroom and it's very airy and open. There's not a lot of tumble home to the body. Tumble home is where they sort of take the, the sides above the belt line and just tip them in. It makes cars look sportier. And we don't have a lot of that. It's almost like a commercial van in here, which, you know, again, doesn't perhaps look very sporty, but it gives you this nice open feeling. Um, as for the back seat, it is limited to just two passengers because you've got a center console here. I've got to say, plenty of leg room. I've got the front seat adjusted here where I'm comfortable as a driver and my knees are nowhere near hitting the, the back of the front seat. However, I wish there was a, just a bit more headroom because if I sit straight, my coiffure grazes the headliner. So at six foot, if they had an extra inch or two of headroom, it would be great, but it's hardly a deal breaker. Um, I've been in cars that cost a lot more, that have less headroom. <coughs> Lincoln Continental. <clears throat> that review will be coming next week, by the way. Um, what else? We've talked about fuel economy. We've talked about range. Um, oh, that's an inter interesting thing. This is a very base Prius here. This is just, the only, like I said, the only option it's got is the paint for $395. Higher end models in the advanced and premium trims, you can get a gigantic 11.6 inch touchscreen display on the center dash. Huge. It's this portrait display that looks very beautiful. This happens to have the standard, um, it's a 7 inch screen. It's home to Toyota's in Entune infotainment system, which is very friendly and easy to use with a touchscreen, and it works well. Also, you can get Qi wireless charging for your phones. So basically you just lay them on the charging pad and if, if they're equipped, they'll start juicing up. No need to worry about anything there. Another interesting thing I thought was the pollen filter for the climate control system. It's allergy season. I have allergies. I like that because it makes me not sneeze. It's a good feature to have. <laughs> also, oh, Talking about the climate control system, this car does not have a standard climate control system. Instead of an, uh, you know, got the radio on, sorry NPR. Instead of a, a regular, you know, system that ties into the engine cooling system or having a resistive type 
heater like you would have with a hair dryer, for instance. Those are very detrimental to, to battery power, as you can imagine. So what they've got in this vehicle is something called a heat pump. And it sort of works like an air conditioner in reverse and is much more efficient. So what you're doing with an air conditioner, you've, you're circulating a fluid through a system. There's a high pressure and a low pressure side. And one side of that gets very cold, which absorbs heat from one side and pumps it over to another side where it is then vented out to atmosphere, for instance. So what you're doing is basically moving heat in a very efficient manner and allows you to warm up the cabin quite nicely without having a really bad uh, impact on the driving range. So that's pretty handy as well. What else is there to talk about? We've done range, uh, battery power, horsepower. Um, if you've got questions, keep them coming in the chat. Let me know what, what you want to know about this car, but I think we should mayhap take it for a drive if you're ready, Ben. Um, all right, so let's go take her for a quick spin out on the road. Um, obviously, this is a hybrid, and right now we are running in EV mode. I charged up the battery last night before I left, so we've got a full full charge in that 8.8 .8 kilowatt hour lithium ion pack. So currently we're silently cruising along in EV mode, using no gasoline at all. Um, in a moment I will talk about the various hybrid mode settings which you can switch, which is pretty handy. In fact, I'm going to do that right now. I'm going to go ahead and, well, I'm at this stop here, put it in HV mode. That's sort of it's hybrid vehicle mode, which it defaults to when the battery pack has been depleted. This runs essentially like, you know, a standard Prius does, um, which is good to know. It's still incredibly efficient. Should be getting you that 54 MPG. Run through the roundabout here. It is a very miserable day. I, I'm glad we're back in the car now. I can turn the heat up a little bit because it's, it's only 45 degrees and it's been raining all week. It's just a very sad time here in Detroit. But um, right now we're in hybrid mode, cruising along in, in drive. Toyota for years on the Prius has also offered, there's a setting on the shifter called B. When you drop down into that, what that does is it's good for you know stop and go driving or maybe in hilly terrain it basically increases the regenerative braking so when you take your foot off the accelerator the car slows down more aggressively on its own which obviously puts more juice back into the battery um let's see i'm gonna cycle through whoops doo, doo, doo. I'm trying to find the energy monitor there it is to kind of show you what's going on Probably a little bit hard for you to see. It's hard for me to see, frankly. But getting out onto the actual road here, it gives you a little scorecard based on your acceleration and your braking and all of that, which is good for training you to deliver the most fuel economy that you can. So right now, I'm dipping into the throttle pretty heavily, and you can hear the engine. Performance, as I mentioned, is OK. Not, not going to beat that Camaro ZL1 off the line, but neither is it dangerously slow. Um, I do find that the 1.8 liter gasoline engine is quite thrashy. It's not particularly smooth or refined, but you know, it's very economical. Toyota is proud to trumpet the fact that this gets 40% thermal efficiency not exactly sure what that means, but they claim your typical gasoline engine is anywhere between 25 and 30 percent thermal efficient, which is obviously a lot less than 40. So they've went through every little detail from the tires to the aerodynamics to light weighting. That's something else I didn't mention. The hatchback on this car is actually made from carbon fiber reinforced plastic, so it's fingertip light and takes a couple pounds out of the vehicle as well. But obviously with all of that, they went into the engine as well and optimized that for the most efficiency possible, so it is 40% thermally efficient. <clears throat> One person asked, oh, we how, have a question? Yep, how do the brakes feel? Uh, the brakes are, are fine, actually. When you initially hit the pedal, you can tell that it's regenerative, but it's pretty easy to modulate, and you can watch the monitor up on the screen there. You can see down here, when I apply the brakes, the little blue line extends, that shows you that's sort of your range for regenerative braking. If you, if you move that blue bar, 
I'll just bring it up again. If you move the blue bar beyond the bottom there, that means you're using the friction brakes, I believe, which you don't necessarily want to do because you'd rather put that energy back into the battery so you can drive efficiently. Um, but the brakes are fine. I mean, they're not as linear, for instance, as you get in a traditional non-hybrid car, but I really have nothing to complain about. So far, we've been driving in... Well, I should also mention the drive modes. You've got three drive modes. There's power, eco, and normal. I just find myself leaving it in normal because... And Ben, up there, you might want to show that. Power, eco, normal. Normal is just... It's normal, right? It's what you use for regular, everyday driving, and it's fine. Power is more useful in the manual, in the owner's manual. They recommend that for hill climbing and situations where you need to get going quicker. Eco, they recommend for like stop and go traffic to maximize efficiency, but normal is just where I leave it. Now beyond that, as I touched on earlier, there are several hybrid mode settings. We're in HV right now, which allows this car to operate as a standard hybrid, which preserves the battery charge. Because remember, this is a plug-in which means you can drive it quite a long distance, up to 25 miles on just, without burning any gasoline, running just on the battery power. So what hybrid mode, by switching into that, it allows you to preserve that battery charge. So let's say you've got to do a long highway drive, and obviously you wouldn't want to waste all of your battery power on the freeway. It's not efficient that way. It's better off to run on the gasoline engine, and then when you get to your destination or when you get to an urban area, switch over into that reserve of electrical power and get you a lot better fuel economy that way. But what I'm going to do is go ahead and switch over now to EV mode, which kills the engine. At least it should kill the engine. And allows us to cruise running exclusively on electrons. Very efficient, very quiet as well. Free of vibration. You know, that's the big advantage of electric cars. The silence, the instant torque. There are a lot of benefits to going electric. It's not as emotional as a big thumping V8, for instance, but um, they do have their pluses. The only problem is we haven't really developed batteries that work well enough for, for most people, but that's a whole other story. <laughs> beyond, now, beyond HV, which is the hybrid mode, and beyond EV, they also have EV Auto, which <clears throat> sort of blends battery power and hybrid power, or pardon me, hybrid <laughs> battery power and internal combustion power for greater performance. This is sort of the mode, what I was reading about, which you would use um, when you, you know you've got to accelerate quickly or you're driving, you know, merging on the highway or something. And I got to be clear, in any of these modes, the gasoline engine can run, even in electric mode, but only in certain situations. Only if you're going faster than 84 miles an hour. Only if you just nail the accelerator all the way down will the engine kick in to give you that maximum acceleration. But I'm going to flip back to EV. Ben, I'm having a hard time monitoring questions. Do you have any popping up? In case the folks are asking about this car. I uh, don't have any specific questions. One person asked if you could explain again what B mode was. Oh, B mode. Yes. So Toyota has had this forever on the Prius. They've got their little shifter, little nub that you put it into, you know, reverse or drive or whatever. And D is what you use for standard driving. But B mode is basically like a braking mode. So it ups the regenerative braking. When you take your foot off the accelerator, the car will slow down a lot faster on its own, putting that energy, of course, back into the battery. And I find myself using B mode most of the time. It's just, you don't have to use the brakes then as much, you know? It kind of does it on its own, which is nice. Which is nice, because you're, you're maintaining that range as far as you can by putting as much juice back into the battery pack. I think, compared to a regular car, the Prius that's what I've got to talk about, driving this car, because it ain't much fun. Sorry. Uh, the steering is really just, it's light, it's very synthesized, it's an approximation of direction. I mean, it's just, obviously, this is not an enthusiast car, and Toyota didn't even try to make it drive like one. The ride is, is smooth enough, it's, it's refined, but 
there is quite a bit of body roll as well. This is a taller vehicle, as you can see, and you wouldn't want to take this down the tail of the dragon or something. Not appropriate. <laughs> um, but performance, like I said, is not bad. Acceleration, perfectly adequate. It's also pretty quiet. I've certainly been in vehicles that are a lot louder than this one. Is it the quietest thing on the road? No. But your ears are not going to be crying blood after a commute to work. So that's a good thing. Um, yeah. Um, in tune, I've one, got a... One, one person oh. asks, uh, have you experienced torque wheel spin in this wet weather? Have I? I have not, but I, to be truth be told, I have not nailed the accelerator heavily either. But now that you've asked, we're going to be coming up to a turnaround here in just a second. Let's try to get some wheel spin. Because the tires are like wheelchair size tires. They're, they're really narrow. So let's see if we can spin them up. I'm going to leave it in EV mode. And I'm going to put it in power mode because, come on, it's power. Who doesn't want more power? Meanwhile, Ted asks, are there any blind spots? Blind spots. Very good question, Ted. This car is surprisingly easy to see out of. It is not a Chevy Camaro. So <laughs> um, forward visibility is quite good. The A-pillars are a little big, but it's, it's really not a problem. Um, also, rearward visibility is, is pretty decent. There is a bar that runs across dividing the glass. Okay, hang on. Oh, we got a little wheel spin. We did, but the uh, traction control arrested that immediately. So if you want a big smoky front drive burnout, sorry. <laughs> sorry, not sorry. We can try again if I turn traction off, maybe. But it's a Toyota. They probably don't let you actually turn it off. Let me see, where did it go? But yeah, visibility. Uh, the only real problem is rearward because you've got a divider across the rear window, but even to the sides, your visibility is pretty good. So, not, nothing to complain about there. Also, as I mentioned, this is a bright and airy cabin, which also helps it feel just more open and easier to see. I will say the Prius does feel, because of that airiness, it feels about 18 feet wide. I have a hard time visualizing where the passenger side front fender is, just because the car feels so chunky. But, um, Obviously, with more time in this car, if you were to buy this car and live with it every day, you're pretty quickly going to learn the dimensions of it and not have a problem. Um, I've only been in, I've only had this as, as a loan for a few days at this point, so I haven't driven it all that far. Um, oh, that's one other thing I wanted to mention. We're averaging fuel economy right now, according to the readout, 53.7, which is all over the number of 54, which is the claimed average when you've got the gasoline engine in play. Um, the other day when it was warmer and sunnier, without doing anything special and running on gasoline, this thing was telling me it was getting 57. And it wasn't even trying. And that's just incredible for a, an affordable, reasonably spacious car to deliver 57 miles per gallon running on gasoline, a 640 mile range. It's crazy. I mean, if you want efficiency, there's no reason not to buy a Prius. And if you, if you really want efficiency, there's no reason not to get the Prius Prime. It's only a couple grand more than the standard Prius. You can plug it in. You can go 25 miles on electricity. You can get 133 MPGE. It's kind of a no-brainer. Unless you want something, of course, more conventional looking or with a longer electric-only range. This person has no idea where they're going. Come on, Volvo. Yep, we're going to stop at the yield sign, because roundabouts are the hardest thing to figure out. Oh, no. No, 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 no. Why are you going where we're going? Stop! No! Why? They have nowhere to go and all day to get there. Got to hold us up in our race Prius. Oh, they're going in the parking garage, too. So anyway, yes, if you want a, a plug-in vehicle, Prius Prime, 
it's going to last forever. It's going to get you 25 miles on, on battery. It's going to get you 133 MPGE. The Volt is its closest competitor, a much more conventional looking car. I think it's a much better looking car. It also has a 53 mile electric only range, although it is a little bit less fuel efficient than the Prius Prime, but you know, you can't win them all. It's also more expensive. I'll have to pull out the sheet, but I think it starts at about 34,000, where this you can get around 27 and change. So obviously you're paying a bit more, but Sammy has a question. Well, Sammy Hajasad has a question? Yes, you'll have to look at it because it disappeared from my Aww. screen. Is the steering of the Prime different than the regular Prius? When you first drove the Prius hybrid, you said it had quite precise steering, yet you describe it as quite differently. I don't even remember driving the standard Prius, truth be told. <laughs> I'd have to go back and look, but I've got to say this is, is very light and just... I don't know what's going on with those front tires. Not that it matters in this car. I wish, just wish there was some more heft to the tiller. But, you know. does Oh, Jody asks, does the EV mode have a speed limit? Yes, I believe it disengages EV mode at 84 miles an hour, which who needs to be going that fast anyway? Because that's not very efficient. And Prius, it's all about fuel economy. Yeah. So why don't we do a quick wrap up here? Um, we'll get out of the car. And do a very quick conclusion. 2017 Toyota Prius Prime. I think the pluses of this car, obviously the fuel economy. To get 57 miles per gallon without even trying on a warm day, that's that's pretty damn good. Also, I find the Entune infotainment system to be very easy, simple to use, and quite responsive with the touch screen that it has. It's very nice. The interior is roomy. You can fit six footers in the back as long as they don't mind their hair touching the headliner. The front seats are gigantic. There's also quite a bit of cargo room. So, you know, with the hatchback body style, you can go to Home Depot and get bags of mulch or something, or maybe you've got a large toy or a, for your kid or a barbecue grill that you bought. It, the boxes should have no trouble fitting in the back there, which is also nice. And I gotta say, the price is quite affordable. 27 and change for a base Prius Prime. A couple grand more than the standard Prius. Why wouldn't you just get this one? You get the electric range, you get the option of plugging it in, and it's even more fuel efficient. Now, the downsides, of course, there are a few of those. And I think downsides are the styling, the looks, <laughs> and the design, <laughs> and the design. Styling, looks, and design are, are three potential downsides. Also, the dynamics are kind of sloppy, the on-road steering and everything, I think could have been a little bit, they could have spent a little more time on that. And I think more EV range would have been good. Um, obviously, batteries are very expensive. And with the Chevy Volt, for instance, you're getting twice the EV range, but it's also several grand more expensive. So they've sort of optimized what they're offering you here. That being said, some more plug-in range would be nice. Also, the engine is a little bit thrashy, but is that a deal breaker? No, I mean, it's not a sports car. <laughs> Again, it's all about efficiency and what it does. It does deliver that efficiency very well. One question for you guys, is this a 21st century Aztec? Pontiac Aztec, of course, famously unattractive vehicle. Um, is, is calling this one, is, is, is equating this one to a 21st century Aztec, is that too harsh? Is it that unattractive? I leave you with that question. And with that, I'm going to sign off from this live webcast. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed our trip with the Prius here. Um, hope you've learned something. Thank you for your questions. Please join us again next time. If you do have, if you do want more information about this car, please go to autoguide.com. My, my written review of it is live, so make sure to check that out. Uh, just over at autoguide.com. Jody, it better be on the homepage, because that is... That, that review should win like a Pulitzer Prize. It's, it's really that good. Not to toot my own horn, folks. I'm sorry. Sammy Check out the review. Me. Sammy's yelling at me. What's he saying? What's it? it is not at all the new Pontiac Aztec. <laughs> well, you can, you can be wrong, Sammy. That's OK. You're entitled to your own opinion. One thing I wanted to mention, Japanese cars always have their fuel filler doors, right? They're always like they lock. You have to release them from the inside. Not so, 
Apparently they're not worried about people stealing electrons from you because the, this door does not have to be popped separately. That's one thing I noticed. And on that note, thank you very much for watching and I will see you again next time. So, bye for now. That was my Hillary Clinton wave. And before you go, don't forget to subscribe to the AutoGuide.com YouTube channel to get all of our latest features and vehicle reviews.